What's up guys? Welcome back. I am here again with Karan to talk about business process flows. What's up Karan? Welcome back. Thank you. Good to be here. Dude, I have gotten so many views and so many comments on the business process mm -hmm. flows playlist. I think that is actually the number two playlist only to my 50 video long flow tutorial list. Wow. So, Lots of love there. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you guys. So, uh, brought Karan back. He he has been hard at work, slaving away for man, what, like four or five months or so since we finished last year, something yes. like that. Because he was sick and tired of hearing that it took six videos to create a business process, and he wanted to simplify that. That's about right. Yeah. And so today, what are you introducing to us today, Karan? So today, I'm going to show you how to build a business process in one video. In one video. So what we've been hard at work at is something called an immersive business process. So if you recall previously, we had to build a CDS entity, build a model-driven app, build a business process, add it to the model-driven app, and then run the business process from the model-driven app. Uh, we've simplified that drastically. Now all you need to do is from the flow portal, create your business process, and run it right from there without the app. So, so you mean that like video two, three, and four, where we built entities, assigned attributes, built a model-driven app, we can just kind of not do all that? Yeah, we don't have to build the model-driven app anymore. See, that's pretty nice. And I think <laughs> it's no, no hate towards model-driven apps. I think they absolutely have their place in the world. Mm -hmm. But I think you said it best, not every business process needs exactly. a model-driven app. If you need a model-driven app, build it, the BPFs are there. Totally. If you don't need the app, you can still use it. Awesome. All right, so what we're gonna do with you today is, if you are familiar with the previous business process video, you'll remember we did an mm -hmm. HR onboarding scenario. What we're gonna do is we're going to revisit that same scenario with the new immersive BPF experience so you can see how much quicker and how much easier it is to build the same exact process. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do All it. All right, let's do this. To get started, I am in the My Flows tab uh, off my flow portal. Yep. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the, the plus new button. And you're on the business process flows section. Exactly, flows. exactly, okay. just as before. Awesome. So I'm going to give this thing a name. Let's call it employee onboarding. And for the entity, I'm now gonna pick none. Ah. So this is how you make an immersive business process. Okay. Now, this is gonna take just a little bit of time, but what this is doing is it's covering that first video of creating the entity in CDS for you. Oh. So you no longer have to go to CDS and click and create your own entity. It does it for you. Whoa, so you guys, you would have just spent 15 minutes watching that video, walking through it, creating all that. Boom, look at that, just did it for you. One video. One video down. done. All right. Nice. So to edit and create my business process, I just hit the edit button. Okay. I'm gonna open this up in a new tab, actually. Just think, no matter how much time anyone spends here, it's still less time than <laughs> doing all the CDS work. All right, so here we have our BPF designer for employee onboarding. Uh, let's begin by, looks like my mouse isn't working now. Your mouse just quit out? Nope, well, we're going trackpad. All right. Uh, so you'll notice when I pick my first stage that's on the BPF, I now have this link to go ahead and add fields and forms. So in this mm. version of the preview, you'll still have to go and add the fields to the entity. Okay. But you no longer have to go into CDS separately, build the entity, and then add attributes. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and do that before anything else. All right. So just clicking that link brings us right to the CDS entity that we created. Awesome. Automatically. That is awesome. Right. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and add all of these fields that's going to store the information we enter in the business process. Okay. To do that, I simply hit add field and I get this nice little flyout. So let's go ahead and start adding our data fields. So we had address and I'm going to call out of type, let's see, so you have like a rich range of options here. Man. Let's just pick text area because it's usually like multiple lines, right? Yep. And I'm going to similarly add emergency contact can see behind us here a little bit, maybe we've already predefined some of the fields. So when Karan looks over his shoulder, that's what he's looking that's at. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Uh, let's call this contact phone number. I'm going to fix 
the case in here a little bit. And I'm going to pick type phone. There's a lot of content types. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Super rich. Let's see, where's date? Date of birth is probably date only. Date unless only. you're really picky about those things and know exactly when I you were mean, born. <laughs> trying to be real superstitious. <laughs> I can only hire people born after 5 a.m. <laughs> and. Let's see, let's call this text. It's a lot of action items to take care of when getting someone on board. Definitely. Good thing we have something to help us keep track of that. You know, and it's good though, the more work you do up front, the less work you have to do in the long exactly, run. Exactly, yeah. And let's call this instead of yes, done. Done. Our last step of verify personal info. This is important. They always get my name wrong. You think you get your name wrong? Oh. So try going be me and go to Starbucks. Man, <laughs> that's true. I shouldn't complain. You probably have it a little bit, a little bit worse. Right. So we've added all of the steps in our business process. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save entity at the bottom here. So what this is going to do is it's going to add all of these attributes with all of these different types to the entity that was automatically created for us. Awesome. Um, and that's it. Nice. So now back on our designer, I'm just going to refresh this guy real quick so it has like all the latest information from the entity. Now, also, if I'm not mistaken, right there you just finished video two. That is correct. Because it wasn't video two where we defined the stages and mm -hmm. added the attributes to the entity. Yep. So right there in this one video, that's two videos down. Thank you for keeping track, John. Um, this makes yeah. me feel better. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Right. So let's get down to building things. So let's call this first stage uh, employee info. Right. Hit apply to save that. And I'm going to start adding my data fields. So I'm going to begin by adding name. Let's call this full name. And let's make this required. Next, I'm going to drag and drop another field. And this was address. Ooh, I'm noticing something that I did not see here before also. Well, I keep working and I'll mm -hmm. just call it out. I see a little arrow there that says triggered process. Mm -hmm. Now that's something new that I did not notice the last time we were building these videos. Uh -huh. And so is that just an easy place to drag a flow to? Uh, you mean down here? No, yeah, yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, so that, uh, so this works only with classic CDS workflows today. Okay. But you can add a classic CDS workflow in that area ah. and that automatically triggers, and you could depict this to run either when you enter that stage or exit that stage. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Nice little touch. I like also, that. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but we now can add flows as actual Ooh, action items. Oh, man. I didn't even notice that. As a button. Oh, man. It's awesome. out in preview. Try it out today. Okay. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> and he'll take some feedback if you have it. Absolutely. 100%. So let's see what else we had. So as you might remember, if you've seen the previous videos, Quran is just basically adding all of these attributes to the steps in the BPF here, which will basically create your checklist that will give you your steps to walk through uh, for the visual process in the BPF. Right. So that's our first stage done. I'm going to drag and drop another one on here. Okay. Let's call this employee resources. Man, this is great. It really shows you guys have been putting a lot of work here into BPF, bringing the two systems together. Oh, yeah. It's so much more powerful when they're all together. Yeah. Because, you know, the thing is, not every process can be automated. And, you know, Flow has got to help you with that, too. So. Totally. You know what else I love about this is that 
we are consistently adding value to flow as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like what's what's beautiful here is this process now, what we're showing you, it doesn't require a model-driven app. So although when you need an app, you can have one, and, and now what we're trying to do is build flows independent value as well mm -hmm. to say if you don't need it, no problem. You can just accomplish this in flow. And, uh, and so I think, you know, that's one of the cool things is, yes, we are part of the Power Platform and we are consistently bringing everything together to create a better together story. Mm -hmm. But then also you can really see our commitment to adding standalone value to our platform as well. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, flow should be the way how you think about your business processes. Yeah. You know, and if it requires that you have a bunch of manual tasks to do, then flow has got to help you with that. And that's what BPFs do for you. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see. Request equipment, I think we called it. Request, yes, we did. This is where I went a bit off board here because I got yeah, carried away. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Man, I love that flow step. That is so cool. I'm going to go play with that later. Yeah, and when you do, let me know what you think. Okay. There's a whole blog post out there. Follow the steps. Hopefully, it's followable and easy enough to build. Awesome. And now, did you post that on the official blog or the community blog? It is on the official blog. The official one, okay. Right on. All right. That's it. That's our BPF. So nice. I'm just going to hit update, and that's going to make this latest and greatest version available. So now, again, that's, that's now the third video. Because mm -hmm. in the third video, we then laid all this out in all the staging. Mm -hmm. So right there, third video, done. Done. Uh. Right. Okay. So, now if you recall in our previous videos, in order to, to use the BPF, you had to, you know, go to your model driven app, keep track of that URL and all that stuff. Yep. To run this, I go to my flows in the flow menu. Yep. Go to the business process flow tab. Yep. And you'll notice if I hover over our employee onboarding process, I see a little play button, much like an instant flow. Nice. So when I hit that, that's going to directly, and keep in mind, no model driven app is going to directly open up that business process for us to run. Nice. Right, so we see along the top, these are three stages. It's pretty yep. basic right now. Yep. You might see a bunch of this white space here. I'll get back to that in a little bit. Okay. But here, if I click in on the stage, you will see that I have all the information I need. So let's. And so now, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep track for you. We essentially just skipped video four. Yeah. Right, because that whole model-driven app, keeping track of all that, yep. that's gone. That's gone so out the window. We don't even need that video. Just go to floor. All right, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so there I have it. And just... now here we are in video five where we could actually walk through this process. Exactly, and I can fill out information, I can move on to my next stage, do all that good stuff. Awesome, wow, Yeah. that is amazing. So. Man, that is huge time savings. And so let's talk about this. We, we did it the old way, mm -hmm. and now we have this new preview immersive experience. When would a user want to use one or the other, and what purposes or, or what might differentiate the two for them? Yeah, the, the big differentiating factor is the fact of whether or not you need a model driven app. Now, if it makes sense for you to have a, a full-fledged app with a lot more information and you want your business process in there, yep. then absolutely go use the embedded experience that's out today. Yep. But if you have a case where you just want the process, not an app, like something like this is just keeping track of where you are in the pipeline, yep. um, then go down this route. Totally. And, and so we wanted to keep it somewhat quick here, but as in the previous videos, you just saw even easier now, you could connect flows to these steps so that let's say Quran finished that step one, you could actually have a flow that notified the next user that it was their turn to go and pay attention in stage two mm -hmm. and complete those items. You could send out a approval request. Approval requests. And, and so that's actually something that we'll talk about in a, in a future video. Mm -hmm. But for today, go and get in preview, check out the immersive BPF experience, give some feedback to me and to Karan. Absolutely. Love to hear all about it. If you want to keep it simple, just go ahead and leave a comment right here on the video. Yep, this is coming soon. Coming soon to preview near you. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it from us for today. Much love. Please go ahead and like and subscribe so you don't miss another video. And from us, we'll see you in the next video, guys. 
All right, so yeah, you want to see something cool? Yeah, sure. All man. right, so you see all this white space down here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what you'd be able to do is actually like author a full form in here, independent. So you can add fields, you can add sections and group in different ways, even add like a Canvas app if you wanted to. Nice. Right? You want, do you want to see it? Yeah, yeah, All sure. Right. So, right, the way you do that is just as before, right? You go to like your stage, you click on this link to add fields and forms. Okay. Um, and because of the fact that this is all in CDS, mm -hmm. you can use the, the WYSIWYG like form designer to author a whole rich form. Yeah, dude, I'm so excited for this. People are going to freak out. Right, so up here, I can add forms. Oh. By the way, I can add dashboards, too. Oh. I Power BI dashboards? Well, you can build Power BI dashboards on top of this. Oh, nice. That's another special thing I need to show you. Oh, man. Okay. But yeah, like, what I'm opening now is it's, like, the form that we can use to show when you actually use the BPF. So I have all of my fields down here, right? Yep. And what this thing is loading here is the actual form. Like, when you design it, what you see is literally what it'll look like. Awesome. Yeah, so look familiar? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, so let's. Oh, you're just going to drag things on. Uh, let's do something really simple, right? Like, I'm going to add uh, a, a tab. Yep. Right? And let's call this uh, process, like, details. OK? And in here. Let's do, oh, why not? Let's do two things, right? Let's add just basic info of like, who is the employee we're onboarding? Okay. And then let's add like some information about who's the person who started the process and who's the person who last like modified it. If there's questions about changes, you know? Okay. So to do that, I'm going to do add fields and let's do, let's see, where is the name? There it is. So that's an employee. And uh, let's do a two section to, to kind of show this off a little bit. Okay. And I'm gonna add fields in here. Let's see. Just make sure you know I saw that in here. Ah, create a buy. So who started this process? And we have created on as to when they started it. Okay. Right. And I'm going to look for who last updated this process. You know, this updated is like things like, you know, when they completed a step or moved the gotcha. GTF Just so forward. Gotcha. see when it's exactly. when actions happening. And modify it on. Let's rename these sections. I'm going to hide this label because it doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to hide both actually. Nice. Yeah. Save. Once that's done, I hit publish. Man, that's it. Native forms experience. Yeah. So rad. Now to resume it, right, I just go into action items. It's like this new consolidated way you can see like your approvals and business processes. This, oh, that's right. I heard about this coming out. I've been talking about this a bunch. It finally landed. Yeah. And so I just, to resume my process, I think, yeah, this was our employee. I'm going to open this up. And just like that, you'll see, like, we have the business process now with its own form. Wait a second. So, but, so that's awesome. But actually, I think I want to point out one thing that's, like, even cooler is you took a business process that was already in flight, modified it. Those changes were then carried through to the mm -hmm. process already in flight. Yep. Gabriel, are you recording this? <laughs>